It's time to pay the bills. I've been wanting to make a video on this game for a very long time. This email states that it is supposed to be an honest review, and I definitely made sure to be honest. Probably a bit too honest for them, but um, hopefully they're cool with that. Anyways, I don't even know how to start with this game, so I'll just give my first impressions that I had with this game because I had never played it before. Before I get into that, I want to give a bit of background to this game. Counter-Strike Nexon Studio, formerly known as Counter-Strike Nexon Zombies, is a free-to-play Counter-Strike game developed by Nexon Corporation and Valve. This game was first published in 2014 as a weird Counter-Strike game that looked like Counter-Strike but definitely was not Counter-Strike. This game was a branch of the Korean Counter-Strike game called Counter-Strike Online, which if you haven't heard of that game, that's a whole video for another day. When the game first started, the main focus was of course the zombies but they seem to have strayed away from that in recent times, renaming the game to currently Counter-Strike Nexon Studio, which they did when they released a new studio mode. Compared to when the game first came out, the game has gone through so, so many updates, morphing it into an amalgamation of game modes. I mean, just look how many game modes are in this game. Anyways, let me move on to my first impression review for the game. First off, the home screen or launcher thing looks like it could be from 2005 and confused me way too much. The UI for this game was not the greatest. The very first thing I also noticed from the launch of the game is the very, very confusing reward system. I don't even know how it works even now. It also takes like a solid minute to click through all the pop-ups when you first start. I try to learn all the currency and microtransactions and crafting and stuff, but my brain just kind of shut off when I tried to actually process it all. You got mileage, decoders, crunchy cookies, combining parts, enhancing this plays. I don't even know what the fuck this is. Death resets, licenses, chair cube fragments, guaranteed weapons boxes, nickname changes, and so much more. Also, the custom stuff added to this game is pretty funny. They have akimbo guns, rocket launchers, very patriotic M249s. <laughs> swords, and much more. Oh, and they also expire when you use them. So once you equip an item you have, it starts a counter before they get like deleted from your inventory or something. I was surprised to hear that this game runs off the Gold Source engine, aka the engine that made Half-Life 1 and Counter-Strike 1.6 possible. This game looks like it probably used Gold Source to its limits, because there is no way this engine is not about to explode from this. Now, I know what you're thinking, this isn't like Counter-Strike at all, and you'd be correct, but also incorrect, because they do have things in this game from older Counter-Strikes, like old factions, old characters, the same weapons as the older games, and even the original game mode. As much as this game tried to be Counter-Strike, it had this cosmetic stuff surgically implanted inside of it. It's quite a weird combination but I wouldn't exactly say it doesn't work. I mean, people do play this game and people do pay money for it. And to be fair, some of these custom gun animations are pretty dope. So let's quickly move on from my yapping and instead move on to the actual gameplay. For my first time playing, I decided to try out the original game mode among the many other game modes. I assume this original game mode was just, you know, the original Counter-Strike game mode. And that's correct, but also not, because there is a huge list of other game modes inside of that original game mode. After struggling to find a server that actually had players and or a decent ping, I just decided to join one filled with bots. This is too much, dude. Three of them. Anyone see them? Dude, can, we, can these bots shut the fuck up? And after being overstimulated, I then decided to move on to another match that was filled with actual people. And hey, I didn't do too bad. It basically plays the same as CS 1.6, which was a pleasant feeling, but my ping was pretty atrocious the entire time. Also, like, nobody uses voice chat in this game, which is probably because the voice chat sounds like straight ass. Hello. Hello. So basically, the original game mode is just Counter-Strike 1.6, but with anime girls running around. Awesome. It's actually pretty enjoyable, or at least it was to me. So let's move on to the zombie game mode now. The first zombie scenario mode I played was called Pursuit Another Truth. Apparently the story here is that some character named Jennifer escaped from Rex Laboratories, Rex Laboratories being the one that created the biological weapon that created all the zombies. While escaping Rex Labs, Jennifer's friend named Jack got infected and turned into a zombie. In this scenario, we're here to find out who is responsible for infecting Jack and to kill them. Yes, there is plenty of lore to this zombie scenario mode that I totally did not look into. Anyways, the gameplay is basically like the zombie escape modes from older Counter-Strikes, having the human team run through a sort of obstacle course to the end while escaping the zombie team. But instead, in this version, everyone is human and all the zombies aren't real people. They're instead replaced by different variants of zombies, kinda similar to Left 4 Dead, but of course not too similar. This one I actually had fun on, especially after my teammate dropped me this insanely OP triple S rated weapon. What the hell is happening? This is what makes the game pay to win. My main gripe with this mode was my ping. Probably because no one is playing this game within a thousand miles of me. But if you end up making it to the end of this zombie map, you get to fight these little goofy boss fights that are unique to each map. 
After having my fair share of zombies for the day, I decided to try out the studio mode, which obviously seemed to mean a lot more to them than the zombie mode. And I really do see why they want to emphasize this mode. This mode to me definitely has the most potential. In this mode, you can create your own maps for Counter-Strike very easily. Just look how easy it was for me. Feast upon my wonderful creation. Things at least seem easy until you get to the part of the studio where people make fully playable story maps. I have no idea how people do this, but for the first one I played, it was this silly little horror map that I might have speedrun. Oh shit, did I just get out of the map? Alright, well I'm gonna go back to the beginning and get past that stupid door. There we go, look at that! Oh! I beat it! I definitely have the world record for this map now, so if anyone can beat me, let me know. I gotta hand it to Nexon though for creating a pretty decent creation tool. You can even play the studio mode with friends, as long as you can actually figure out how to create a lobby with this horrendous UI. But it's basically Gmod if it was in Counter-Strike, although I would probably just stick to Gmod. There are even KZ maps that people have created. Death Run, that was really jank, a really shitty soccer mode, and a hide and seek mode which was pretty much just prop hunt, and this was really where we spent most of our time, because it was actually fun. In the beginning, a random seeker is chosen, and the hide get to pick two options of random props, basically gambling for props. There was rotation and freezing which would allow for some pretty bullshit hiding spots but it was fun nonetheless, especially seeing these dumbass props just running around that definitely should not be there. You can even peep as a prop which would allow you to basically just spectate while you're alive. And the props also make footstep sounds which would make for some funny situations where you're sneaking around as a prop. There are a lot more gameplay aspects to this mode and I'd probably recommend this game just to try this game mode out. This mode would be a lot more fun if there were just better and more maps, but we played for about two hours without getting bored. We probably only checked about 5 of the 37 game modes in this game as well, so there's probably some other hidden gems out there. Even though some of the maps were very boring or just didn't work at all, I was still pretty impressed by the studio mode. I'm just a little surprised they didn't release this studio mode separate to the zombie mode. I know they probably made the studio to create maps for the zombie mode, but it really could have worked as its own standalone game, especially considering how many other game modes are in this studio. Even though I've shown quite a bit about the game, I haven't even scraped the surface of it. Well, maybe a bit. Oh, and just a quick side note, the achievements for this game are insane. There's one achievement that is successfully survive zombie mode 3,000 times. Only 0.0% of players have achieved that. In fact, there are about 45 achievements that 0.0% of players have achieved, and that's 45 out of 65 achievements. Overall, the game was a pleasant surprise if you can get over the unpleasant UI. That's really the main thing holding it back. I mean, this game was made in 2014, but I could easily see people mistaking it for a game that was made in the early 2000s. There's definitely some updating they can do. The zombie scenario mode was pretty fun, but like I said, seemed outdated, and the original game mode would have been way more fun if there were just more people playing it. The studio mode has the most potential and is pretty much just Roblox and Counter-Strike. If I had to rate the whole game, I'd probably give it like a 7 out of 10. Definitely not a Counter-Strike game. Also, I'm sorry for being gone so long, I had taken a month break off, and it's pretty hard to get back after that break, but I promise after this video goes up, I'm back on my grind. I am kind of working on two videos at once right now, so expect one pretty soon. As always, make sure to subscribe and like the video, and if you didn't like it, go ahead and leave a comment why, and I'll try to do better next time.